I feel like this is gonna be a controversial topic. Guys, we need to talk about scales. For a really long time, I was so scared of the scale because it actually had the power to ruin my day. All I had to do was step on it and if the number was higher than I'd wanted, I'd be curled up in fetal position crying. I wouldn't want to do anything the rest of the day because in my head, it was pointless. It got to a point where the scale was controlling my happiness. So I did what every body loving article and influencer on the internet told me to do, throw it out. Is it the right thing to do? I am not here to argue if scales are good or bad. They are neither good nor bad. It just depends on how you choose to look at it. And the truth is, the way I view the scale and my relationship with the scale has evolved over the years. It's been both negative and positive. And that's something people never talk about because I feel like it's either you hate the scale or you're a guy. So let's go back to the beginning to understand how my relationship with the scale went from being non-existent to obsessive, to terrified, to empowering. My goal with this video is to teach you how to stop fearing the scale because you simply can't let this piece of metal and glass control you. I'm gonna show you how I freed myself from the scale's power and put that power back into my own hands. I believe there are four stages of relationships that one can have with a scale. I gave this a lot of thought. Number one, the non-existent relationship where you literally don't care what you weigh because your weight does not impact your life whatsoever. Number two, the abusive relationship where the number on the scale affects your happiness, controls your mood, and has power over your self-worth. For a lot of women, a light number means you're gonna have a good day and a heavier number means you're going to have a bad day. Number three, the breakup, where you realize how messed up the scale makes you feel so you throw it out and ban yourself from ever stepping on it again. This is a healing phase to relearn that your self-worth is not related to your weight. Most people will tell you that that is pure freedom, that that is winning, but there's actually one more stage. The final stage is hard to reach, but it's possible and it's even more freeing and more empowering than stage number three. I'll get to stage number four a little bit later in this video. For now, I wanted to find each stage a little bit more, purely from my perspective as a female who has struggled with both her weight and her body image. In my experience, this only really existed from zero to eight years old. One of the first times I realized that weight was even a thing was when I was eight. I was at a family party at one of my auntie's houses, so excited to be eating amazing Vietnamese foods that only came out for special occasions like people's birthdays or weddings. I had just taken my first sweet and savory bite of bun uk, which is this rice paper roll thing. It is so good. When one of the other kids walked up to my table and started staring at me, she pointed her finger at me and asked, why are you so fat? When those words came out of her mouth, my body just froze. The food in my mouth suddenly lost all its flavor. I remember my face getting hot and my eyes welling up. I didn't know how to respond, so I just ran to the bathroom. I locked the door, spit out my half-chewed food, and started crying and crying and crying. It was from that day forward that my weight suddenly had a meaning and it wasn't a good one. Next up, the abusive relationship. This stage lasted from about nine years old to my mid 20s, almost 20 years. In the abusive relationship stage, I did a lot of bad things. Things that are super uncharacteristic of who I am today and I am super ashamed to share with you what I'm about to share with you. I played around with really unhealthy things to try to lose weight. As a teenager, I used to use diet teas, and this is pre-Instagram, you guys. I just found this by myself. Diet pills, fat blockers, fat burners, and laxatives. I was so obsessed with getting skinnier, and I literally didn't care how I was gonna do it. Plus, I didn't know anything about anything. Honestly, if I were me then right now, I'd probably fall into the traps of skinny tees and waist trainers. I was naive, desperate, and I just wanted to lose weight so bad so that I could fit in. Maybe I could have more friends, maybe more boys would like me. I remember specifically this one time in the fall of freshman year of college when I went to Rite Aid to look for diet pills. After spending about 30 minutes going up and down the supplements aisle, I ended up choosing this pack of green tea fat burning pills because it was only $8.99. I secretly carried out that brown paper bag to my dorm thinking I had the solution. 
I was so excited to take one. I remember it smelling so strongly herbal that I wanted to throw up, but I didn't care. I was gonna suck it up and take it because this was going to be the thing that would make me skinny. After swallowing one pill like the back of the box said, I proceeded to read my bio textbook on mitochondria or whatever you learn in bio 101. Then five minutes in, I started to feel my heart thump, like a really heavy thump. Then my face started to get really hot and my head started feeling really weird. It felt like I was running without having gone on a run. I was so scared I was gonna have a heart attack because my heart kept beating faster and faster and faster. I went to go lie down thinking that I might actually die. Then after college, I did my first and only bikini competition where I was trained by a professional bodybuilding coach to weigh in every day. If I was heavier, he'd tell me to stop eating so many carbs, and this included iceberg lettuce, by the way, and then he'd proceed to tell me to do more cardio. I didn't question his techniques or advice because he won a ton of trophies in the bodybuilding world, so I just wanted to be a good student and just listen to my teacher. Losing weight throughout my eight-week bikini competition journey made me feel like I was finally achieving something I had never been able to do. It felt so good and so addicting to feel successful. Was I happy though? No. If you ask Sam who I became around that time, it was a really mean, really cranky, vanity-driven version of Cassie. After the competition, when I decided to go back to normal healthy living, not bikini competitor living, which by the way, is not healthy or sustainable for the long term, my body was so deprived that it soaked up every single calorie I was eating. I started to gain weight and I couldn't control it. My body was so messed up because every time I stepped on the scale, it made no sense. Sometimes salad would make me gain and pizza would make me lose. Working out didn't even seem to matter. I had totally damaged my metabolism. I was so scared to step on the scale because anytime I'd see the number jump, I'd cry and let the rest of my day just go to waste, which led me to the next stage. Stage number three, the breakup. There comes a time when any girl with body image issues should probably just get rid of their scale. It was a phase of my life where I was gaining weight on YouTube and everybody saw. People commented on my body all the time saying that my workouts must not work because I was getting fat. There was hate from a community of YouTubers who made videos about my body, shaming me for the way that I looked and the way that I ate. It was during this time period that I had to toughen up and learn how to love my body regardless of how I looked or how much I weighed. I think a lot of you guys probably found my workouts around this time because of my video, The Perfect Body, which ended up going viral, where I visually photoshopped myself on camera to look like how I thought people wanted me to look. Bigger boobs, bigger butt, thin her waist, thigh gap, your thighs. It was from that moment that Blogilates became synonymous with body positivity and it was a good thing for me. I was still healing from years of hating my body and hearing that other women were feeling the same things I was feeling was so encouraging and so powerful. Body positivity helped free me from food jail. I was no longer scared of eating foods I used to label as bad. So Sam and I kind of went crazy. We ordered dessert after every meal, we ate late, we went out a lot and we really had a great time trying out so many new restaurants. It was pretty awesome to have this break from eating healthy because it actually ended up recalibrating my metabolism in a way. However, when your job is to make fitness videos and you actually need the right feel to get through a workout, you just can't eat like that. That's the reality. I remember specifically, I was on set for a hit video and I had to ask to take a break from filming because I could barely breathe. I was so embarrassed and so ashamed of myself because all of my videos are filmed in real time, no breaks, ever. So after that shoot, I realized that real food freedom doesn't mean eat whatever you want all the time. Food is supposed to help you, not hurt you, and my food freedom was getting to a point where I just couldn't even do my job right. So as you can see, there is a stage after stage three. It doesn't apply to everyone because some people stage three is the type of freedom that they need, but not for me. Eating whatever I wanted did not result in true happiness or true freedom because it was hindering my strength and my endurance. It was affecting my body and my business and I was not feeling my best. That's why stage three for me was just a temporary healing phase. Now I introduce you to stage number four. 
the empowered relationship with the scale. The empowered relationship is where you are unafraid to step on the scale because you realize it actually doesn't hold any power over you. A higher number or a lower number on the scale does not affect your mood because you know that your weight is simply a data point and that a scale is simply a tool that could help you reach your goals. That's it. August 2019 was the beginning of stage four for me. You already know that this is when I embarked on my 90 day journey and actually weighed myself every single day. The first day I stepped on the scale, I had to keep repeating to myself that this was just a number. It was still shocking to see that number after years of not stepping on the scale, but it also felt like I was somehow getting to know myself again. Like I was unafraid to know this extra information about myself. So the more I stepped on the scale, the less it scared me because I had goals to reach and I needed as many tools to help me as I could. I wanted to get in the best shape of my life mentally and physically. And that involved weighing myself, which is fine when you are intentionally trying to lose weight, which for the record is not a bad thing. If you are going into it with a healthy purpose, on the contrary, if you're not in the right headspace, when you're going on a weight loss journey, this is incredibly dangerous for your mental health. And I do not, recommend you go near a scale. You need to stay in stage three. If you feel like higher numbers make you sad and lower numbers make you happy, I highly suggest you work on healing yourself first before you do anything related to weight loss. You will be at risk of falling back into stage two, the abusive, obsessive relationship. Now, if you wanna go on a journey, Go on one, but make it about lifting heavier, holding longer planks, running faster, or finishing one of my seven day or 30 day challenges. You have plenty to choose from on my blog. What you need are some non numerical achievements to give you a sense of what an unweight related success feels like. I took five to six years to heal my body image issues and recalibrate my metabolism. And now, it's been a year of me fully embracing and living out stage four of my relationship with the scale. And who knows where I'm gonna be next year or the year after that. Maybe there are other stages that I haven't discovered yet and I'll tell you about it when I'm there. But right now I am in stage four, feeling empowered and feeling very in control and happy. All right, you guys, that is my theory on the stages of relationships with the scale. I am really curious where you are right now in your relationship with the scale. Go ahead and leave a comment in um, the comments area below and let's have a really open discussion about where you are and where you want to be. Okay. So that is all. I love you so much and I'll see you in the comments. Bye.